The programming language called Python is a high-level interpreted programming language known for its syntax and simplicity. Python is used in a variety of fields like web development, data science, artificial intelligence, and much more. It also has vast libraries and frameworks to work on, like you can build graphical user interfaces with the tkinter library, you can create plots with the matplotlib library, create games with Pygame, and create web applications using the Django framework. Here's a small history about Python. It was created by Guido van Rossum in 1980. He wanted to create a language that is easy to read and simple, so he created Python. Guido was a fan of a comedy sketch called Monty Python's Flying Circus. This is where the name of this programming language was originated. Python is a high-level language, that is because it offers a high level of abstraction and keeps all low-level details away, making it easier for programmers to code. It also offers a pretty simple syntax, which is very comprehensive and easy to read, making it a great choice for beginners to start with. Also, Python is a dynamically typed language, while languages like C, C++, and Java are statically typed languages, which means that the programmer must indicate the type of the variable when creating it. However, a dynamically typed language like Python is a language that guesses the type of the variable during runtime. You don't have to specify the type. Even if the variable name stores a string, in the next line you can store an integer, so you can change the type of the variable because it is dynamic. Python also uses something called garbage collection, that periodically searches for any objects in the memory that are not being used and deallocates them. If you are familiar with languages like C or C++, you know that we can use dynamic memory allocation to create dynamically allocated variables that also must be deallocated. Well, Python does that for you, it allocates and deallocates space in memory. To get started, you need to install Python on your machine. You can head over to the Python official website and download the latest version. During the installation, it is important to enable python.exe to path, and after the installation, make sure to run a checkup to make sure that Python was installed by opening CMD and typing python dash dash version. With Python installed, you can open the Python IDLE by simply searching for Python and you'll get this Python IDLE where you can run Python code. Next, you need to install an IDE or a special text editor that allows you to write, run, and debug code. Now, with Python comes something called pip, or package installer for Python. It is a package manager that allows you to install libraries written in Python. For example, if you want to build charts in Python, you need matplotlib. And to install matplotlib, you need to write pip install matplotlib on the terminal to be able to install matplotlib. The Python interpreter is the one who executes Python code. It is also called CPython because it is implemented in the C programming language. When the interpreter receives a program to execute, it first starts with the lexical analysis, which it basically tokenizes each character in the source code and groups it into a certain groups like keywords, identifiers, operators, and literals. These tokens are then placed inside a abstract syntax tree which is then converted by the interpreter to bytecode. This bytecode is then fed to the Python virtual machine that is able to execute bytecode. Once that is done, the output is displayed on the console. If you never wrote Python code, the first thing you'll learn is to print hello world on the console. The print function is responsible to display output on the console. In Python, we have four common data types you'll see in any programming language. We have integers, float, strings, and booleans. And each data type takes a certain amount of memory. Now I want you to comment below what is your favorite programming language and I am waiting for your answer. Thank you for watching this video, I hope it was valuable and you learned something new. I also invite you to watch one of these end screens that will appear right now and I hope to see you in the next video.